Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at pressure. So let's get started. Now we're going to kick off the third section, gas laws and the kinetic model from the properties of matter topic by looking at pressure. And specifically, it's the relationship between pressure, force and area that we're going to look at. So firstly, we have a definition for pressure. And you could be asked to state what is meant by pressure. So pressure is the force per unit area. And this leads us to this relationship here. So we give pressure the symbol small p, force F and area A. So we have pressure equals force divided by area, or P equals F over A. Where P is pressure measured in pascals or newtons per square meter, F is force measured in newtons and A is area measured in meters squared. We can also say that one pascal is equal to one newton per square meter, and this just comes from the equation. So this is a typical multiple choice question where they might ask what is one pascal equivalent to? And you can see that because on the left hand side, Pressure is measured in pascals, and this is equal to force, which is measured in newtons, divided by area, which is in meters squared. So we could say that one pascal on this side is equal to one newton divided by meter squared, or one newton per square meter. We should also be aware of atmospheric pressure, which is approximately one times 10 to the five pascals, which is the same as 100,000 pascals. And this might be useful for questions which involve atmospheric pressure, where it doesn't explicitly tell you what atmospheric pressure is. So sometimes it's good to remember that it's one times 10 to the five pascals. It then says to note that the force acts perpendicular at 90 degrees to the surface of an object or substance. And next we're going to look at some examples of situations involving low pressure and then we'll look at some examples of situations involving high pressure. So some examples of low pressure to begin with might be things like an elephant's foot on the ground. So you can see here the elephant's foot is huge, which means that the force due to their weight acting on the ground is going to be spread over a large area, which will reduce the pressure. So the bigger the area, the smaller the pressure. And we can see that from this equation here. So if we keep force the same, keep it constant, and area changes, then pressure will change. So the bigger the area, the bigger the denominator in this fraction, so the smaller the pressure. And the opposite is also true, so keeping force the same again, the smaller the area here means the smaller the denominator in this fraction, so therefore the pressure becomes bigger. So pressure and area have an inverse relationship, which means the bigger one is, the smaller the other one is. Another example might be a car tire rolling slowly over a human's foot, and you would find that the human's foot probably wouldn't be damaged by this single tire rolling over the foot, because the force due to the car on the ground is due to the car's weight, and the weight of the car will be spread over the four tires. And tires typically have a large surface area, which means that there would be a small pressure exerted on the human's foot, therefore not causing much damage. You've also got snowshoes, which are these things here which attach onto the outside of shoes, and they give you a much larger surface area to walk on, which means that this is going to reduce the pressure of you walking on the snow, which makes it much easier to walk on the snow. And lastly, we have skis. So remember, skis are very long, and therefore they have a large surface area in that direction, and therefore there's a lower pressure on the skis, meaning they can glide quite nicely over the surface of snow. And that's due to the reduced friction between the skis and the snow. Next, we have some examples examples of high pressure situations. So one example is stiletto heels. So for women to wear stiletto heels, it might be quite difficult to walk on because you'll notice the heel here has a very small surface area with the ground and therefore there's going to be a large pressure exerted on this point on the ground. It would also mean that if someone was wearing these heels on sand, then the high pressure point on the heel here is going to sink into the sand very easily because it would exert a high pressure on the surface of the sand. So you've also got blades on ice skates. So you'll notice the thin sharp blades on the ice skates here. They are going to have a small surface area in contact with the ice here and therefore they're going to exert a high pressure on the ice. And this makes it easier to glide and move over the ice. And lastly, we have the pointed end of a nail. So you've maybe never thought about why nails have two ends to them with one pointed end and one sort of larger surface area. And that's so the larger surface area on the nail, the round part, can be struck by, say, a hammer, whereas the pointed end is going to be inserted into something like wood, for example. So you want the end of the nail to have as small an area as possible so that there is a high pressure exerted on the surface that it's being knocked into. That's just a few examples of low pressure and high pressure situations, but the main idea is to remember that the bigger the area, the smaller the pressure, or the smaller the area, the bigger the pressure. And remember as well that in questions where you have more than one surface in contact with the ground, you're going to need to take into account the area of all of those. For example, four car tires in contact with the ground, 
you'll need to take into account four times the area of one tyre to get the full area of all four tyres in contact with the ground. Or it could be, for example, two feet for a person in contact with the ground, and if you know the area of one of your feet or shoes, you need to times the area by two to get the total area for both your feet in contact with the ground. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.